Hi, today we're going to learn about inverses and matrices. In this section, I will go over the identity matrix I, which is similar to the multiplicative identity, which is 1 times A equals A, and A times 1 equals A. I will define the inverse of matrix A times A inverse should equal to I, and if you multiply A inverse times A, equal, it should equal to I. And I will go over the steps to find the inverse of a square matrix A. Also, I will solve the system of equation using matrix inverses. So before we um, start the problems, I have to go over some of the definitions. If you um, don't want to go over the definition, you could just skip um, fast forward. So the um, an identity definition of an identity matrix is for each positive integer n, n by n identity matrix I is an n by n matrix with one with the ones diagonals and zeros el elsewhere. So the identity matrix is basically the matrix I where it's um right I times this should be all the diagonals should be ones and the rest on the right of it should be all zeros and on the um left of the diagonals below the diagonals are just all zeros. So that's pretty explanatory. For example, um we, if you have a matrix of 2, 1, 5, 3, 0, 7, 5, 4, 2, if you times that by I, you should get B. And if you times the identity matrix by B, you should get B. So let's do this part. B times I. So here's um, matrix B. Multiply that by I. And you should get B, which is true. 2, 1, 5, 3, 0, 7, 5, 4, 2. If you multiply the identity matrix 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 by B, you should get B. So that's true. This is also the multiplicative identity. So it's like 1 times A equals A, and then A times 1 should equal A. So that's the um, identity matrix, definition of an identity matrix. So the definition of an inverse of a matrix is the inverse of an n by n matrix A is an n by n matrix A t inverse if it exists such that A times A inverse equals I and A inverse A equals I. If A has an inverse, then A is invertible. So what it means by um, if A has an inverse, it basically means when you... Um, when you try to make it... If it doesn't... When you do the row up operation, and if it doesn't go, if it doesn't, equal, if you can't make it look like the identity matrix is like this one, where you get a diagonals of one and the rest zeros, if you can't make it like that, then it's not, it's not, um, not invertible. That's what it means. Okay, so um. Here are the steps for finding the A inverse. First, write the argument matrix um, A equals I, where I is the identity matrix of the same size as A. Then we're going to use row of operation, the Gaussian elimination method, to convert, to convert the left-hand side of the augmented matrix to I. Um, I'll do the I will do um, problems to make this more make sense. And then. If the left-hand side can be converted to I, then I equals I becomes I, I equals A inverse, and the A inverse appears on the right-hand side of the augmented matrix. If the, le the left-hand side cannot be converted to I, then A is not inverted. And then the theorem, here's a theorem called solving a system of using A inverse. So if a system of n linear equation in the variables has a unique solution, then the solution is given by x equals a inverse times b, where a is the matrix of the coefficients, b is the matrix of constants, and x is the matrix of the variables. So um, we'll do the problems to, so to make sure to make the um, these definition makes all sense once we do the problems. So um, the first question says for each given matrix a, show that a a times identity matrix equals A, and I times A equals A, where I is the identity matrix and in the appropriate size. So, first of all, 
first, um, what I'm going to do is I got to find our identity matrix. So to find the identity matrix, I got to first find out what size is this. So this is a one, one, two, three. So this is a three by three. So our identity matrix is going to be a three by three. So it's going to be one zero 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 one zero 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 one. So it's pretty simple. Um, you just times. First, we're going to do a times i should equal a. So a is the matrix a is three, five, seven, two, six, eight, one, two, three. Times it by the R identity matrix, which is this one. One zero zero. 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And that should, when you do, um, when you multiply matrices, if you don't know how to multiply matrices, there's a, um, I have a video on multiplication of matrices. So it's basically this thing times this thing, right? So this is a three by three. This is a three by three. All right, our matrix is going to be a three by three. So if you multiply it, you're going to get three, two, one, five six two seven eight three this is our matrix if you have a, any problems with multiplication matrix i have a video on multiplication of matrices on linear algebra and then you have now we have to do um i times a should equal a so here's our identity matrix one zero 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 one zero 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 one and times that by a. So that's three, five, seven, two, six, eight, one, two, three. If you multiply this by that, you get um the matrix three, two, one, five, six, two, seven, eight. Hey, these um these matrices are equal, right? A times A equals A, and I times A equals A. So this is an uh, so this is definitely an identity matrix. So this whole thing is an identity matrix. So, so yeah, if you've figured how to multiply um, matrices, um, just check out my video. Okay, so now let's say it says determine whether the matrix in each pair in each pair are inverses of each other. So So okay, so, how do I do determine whether the matrix in each pair are inverse of each other? So um, first I'm going to multiply this. So matrix, we'll call this matrix A and we'll call this matrix B. So this is a um, two by three. I'm going to see if this is possible. And this is a one, two, this is a by three by two. So these numbers are the same. So it's possible. So our new matrix is going to be a two by two, right? this number and this number so if you multiply a times B you're gonna get you're gonna get um what are we getting we're gonna get You're going to get one zero zero one, right? If you multiply a times so, this is what a b equals. This is also uh, an identity matrix. Right. So now I'm going to multiply b times a.
So if you multiply, first I'm just going to rewrite it. So this is going to be 1, 0, 3, 0, 2, 4. And matrix A is this weird, this 1, 0, 0, 0 times 1 half, and 0. I'm not going to do the work because it's going to be really time consuming, but when you multiply it, you're going to get 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 3, 2, 0. Are these matrices, I mean, are these inverse of each other? So I'm going to say no. Why? Because since the A, matrix A times B does not equal B times A, and then that does not equal the identity matrix. So remember A times B, you get 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, and then BA is this weird one. Um, one zero zero. They're not the same, right? And they do not equal the identity matrix, right? So, what rule is the? Yes. Yeah, so I'm using this rule. So a times. No. Um. I'm using the identity matrix, right? A times b equals a so oops in order to be an inverse they have to be equal to each other and then they they should equal the identity matrix so this is not possible let's do also yeah if if you um, forgot, it's really if you don't know how to do mul um, multiplication matrices, um, there's a video. Now, 39 says, find the inverse of each matrix A if possible. Check that A times this is A inverse equals I, and A inverse times a should equal i. So we're going to find the matrix. It says find the matrix of, of each matrix, find the inverse of each matrix if possible. And then we have to check it by doing a times a, a inverse equals i and a inverse times a equals i. So I'm going to um, do some of the, I'm going to write down the steps to find the inverse. So step one is to write Write augmented matrix. Augmented matrix. A should equal I. And then you second rule is we're gonna have to use the row of operation. Use row of operation. Or also known as Gaussian elimination. Gaussian elimination to convert to convert a the augmented augmented matrix A equals I into I equals A inverse. And then the last step is check that A invert times A inverse equals equals I and then A inverse A should equal Y. 
So okay, so first I'm gonna um first step is write the augmented matrix. First I gotta find out what is our I identity matrix. So first let's look at the original. This is a three by three. So our our identity matrix is gonna be a three by three, so it's gonna be one zero 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 one zero 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 one. Okay, so we're gonna uh, so this is the first step. We're gonna write it in augmented matrix, so A equals I, so it's gonna be our matrix is gonna look like this. One zero one zero two 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 one zero. This line solid line means equal, right? If you um yeah, we learned that from Operation of matrices should equal one zero 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 one zero 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 one. Okay, so now we got to um step two. We're gonna have to use row of operation. So we're gonna use the row of operation to make it to make it um basically we want the this matrix to look like this. And to do that we're gonna use row of operation. So let me put it in the next page. So um the step two. So what I could do is I can manipulate row three and I'm gonna do two times row one minus row three. Okay, so I'm not gonna show the work because it's gonna take too long, but if you actually if you need help with um with um row of operation, look under um operation of matrices on linear algebra. So when I mint it mini play um row three, our new row three is gonna be Um, zero, negative one, two, two, zero, negative one, zero, two, two, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, and one, zero, zero. Remember, okay, so my goal is to make this all diagonals of one and the rest here zero. And here is zero. I'm basically trying to make this look like an identity matrix. So what can else can I do? I can also I'm gonna I'll, I'll keep on manipulating row three. There's so many ways you can do this. My way isn't always the um isn't all the um my way is just one way. So I'm gonna manip manipulate row three again. So I'm gonna do row two plus um two row three. So my new row three is going to be zero zero six four one negative two. This is going to be zero two two zero one zero one zero one one zero zero. Good. Okay, so. Um, I got all this zeros, right? I'm not going to make this all ones right now. I just want to make, I, I could do that at the very end. I want these all zeros. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I will keep on using row of operations so I can manipulate row two. And I will do three times row two minus row three. This will give me row, a new row two. So this is going to be zero, six, zero, negative four, two, and two. And that the row one, row three hasn't changed. So I'm just going to rewrite it. So one, zero, one, one, zero, 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 six, four, one, negative two. 
So now I, I got to make this zero. So what I'm going to do is I will manipulate row one. So I'm going to do six times row one minus row three. So this is going to be our new row one is going to be six zero zero. Two, negative one, two, zero, six, zero, negative four, two, two, zero, zero, six, and then four, one, negative two. Okay, so we got this all zeros and then we got all the zeros, but the last step is to make this all diagonals of one, which is really simple. All you got to do is multiply each row by a scalar. So I could do more than one of row of operation for this part because it's just multiplying each row by a scalar. So um, I'll do one six row one. Now give me my new row one, and then I will multiply row two by one by the scalar of row one six as well. And then I'm going to multiply this by 1, 6 by row 3. And this will give me my new row 3. So when you do all that row of operation, you're going to get 1, 0, 0. This is going to be a fraction 1 third, negative 1, 6, 1 third, 0, 1, 0, negative 2 thirds, um, 1 third. One third, zero, zero, one. This is going to be two thirds. This is going to be one six, and this is going to be um, negative one third. So this this is definitely invertible because we were able to make it look like the identity matrix of one. The more we were able to make the left side look like an identity matrix of one zero 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 one zero 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 one. If any, if you cannot make it make it look like this, then it's not invertible. So that's how I know it's invertible. So our inverse is going to be this whole thing, not this. This. So it's going to be. One third, so yeah, what we did was we did, um, we made it look like I equals A inverse by using the row of operation. So our inverse is one third, um, negative two thirds, this is positive two thirds negative one six, this is positive one third, this is positive one six, and this is one third, one third, and negative one third. So this is our inverse. Okay, so doo -doo -doo. now we gotta do the third step. We gotta check let's see, can I um, please press pause because I'm going to, um, erase it because I need more space. So, if you need to press, if you need to show, if you need this, press pause. I'm going to clear the board. So now I got, the third step is check that. A inverse equals equals I and and then A inverse times A should equal I. So we know our our matrix A is one zero two zero two one 
1 to 0. And our inverse is 1 third, negative 2 thirds. When you multiply these two matrices, you're going to get 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So this part is true, right? That's true. Now let's do this part. A inverse times A should equal A. So the inverse would be 1 third, negative 2 thirds positive two-thirds this is negative one-sixth, this is positive one-third this is one-sixth this is one times by um, a which is one zero one 0, 2, 2, 2, 1, 0. When you multiply these matrices, you get 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. You get an identity matrix of this, right? So this part is true as well. So this is true. So we must conclude that A inverse is this. So yep, this is our final answer. Okay, last problem. So it says solve each system of equation by using A inverse. I couldn't write it. It should be A inverse. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this rule, right? The which rule? This one. X equals A inverse times B. So, um, I got to find A. And remember it said A is basically the coefficient of this matrix. So, this is going to be 1. This is going to be negative 5. This is going to be negative 1. And this is going to be positive 3. It's basically the coefficients of this matrix. So it's going to be 1, negative 1, this is going to be negative 5, and this is going to be 3. And then x is basically the variables of this matrix, so it's just going to be x and y. And B is just um, whatever the answers of this. So it's going to be negative 5 and 1. So we're going to use this rule. X equals A inverse times by B. So first I got to find um, A inverse. So to do that, I have to write it in augmented matrix. So it's going to be a first set up our augmented matrix could be a equals i so it's going to be 1 negative 5 negative 1 3 and that should equal to our identity matrix since this is a a is a 2 by 2 so our identity matrix is going to be also 2 by 2 so it's going to be 0 1 0 0 1 so that should equal 1 0 0 1 
Now we're going to use row operation to make this A to make it look like the, the identity matrix, right? So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to min, change the first row by 3 row 1 plus 5 row 2. And this should give us um, negative 2, 0, 3, 5. This is negative 1, 3, 0, 1. And then I'm going to manipulate row 2. This is going to be row 1 minus 2, row 2. So this is going to be 0, negative 6, 3, 3. And we haven't changed row 1, so we could just rewrite it as negative 2, 0, 3, 5. Now I can multiply each row by, I want this diagonal to be 1, so I can multiply each row by a scalar. So I'm going to do negative 1 half row 1, that will give me my new row 1, and I'm going to multiply negative 1 6 by row 2, and that will give me my new row 2. So I'm going to get 1, 0, 0, 1. And then you're going to get, over here, you're going to get negative 3 halves, negative 5 halves, negative 1 half, and this is going to be negative 1 half. So yes, I know this is invertible because it, we can make it, we can make this as an identity matrix. That's how I know it's invertible. So now what I'll make it, so our, so my A inverse is this one. So it's going to be negative 3 halves, negative 1 half, this is going to be negative 5 halves, and this is going to be negative 1 half. That's my A inverse. Let me, I need more space. So what am I going to do now is I found my A inverse. So I'm going to, I'm going to do continue with this, I'm going to do A equals A inverse of B. We know our um, we know our B and we know our A inverse and we know our X's, so. A inverse is negative three halves. This is negative five halves. This is negative one half. Multiply that by b, which is negative 5 and 1. So if you forget, b is um b is our our uh, negative 5 and 1. We got that from um that's pretty much our answers, right? And our x is just the variables x and y. So when you multiply that, you get 5 and 2. So what they're saying is this should equal x, and this is a inverse, and this is our b. So x is basically our variable, so it's going to be 5 and 2, right? Remember, it's, this is our x and this is our y. So they're saying x should equal 5 and y should equal 2. So what, how do... How, um, the last step... So that's what our x is. And then we can do it, what we can do is solve, by, solve it by plugging it into the original equation. So remember our original equation was x minus 5y equals negative 5, this is negative x, plus 3y equals 1. So if you plug in 5 into x and y into 2, you're going to get 5 minus 5 times 2 equals negative 5. So that's true. The first equation is true. Let's try the second. 
and then if you plug in the second one you get 5 minus 10 Oh wait, the first one is 5 minus 10 equals negative 5, and then, so negative 5. So the first equation is true, right? This one is true. Let's try the second one. The second one, if you plug in, you would get negative 5 plus 3 times 2 equals 1. That would be negative 5 plus 6 equals 1, and then 1 equals 1, and that's true. So they're both true, so our final solution is 5 comma 2. This is our final answer. And if you ever think about how you got, how did we get this equation, x equals a inverse b? So do you remember this equation? Um, we got that from this equation a equals b if you multiply each side by a inverse you're going to get a inverse a times by x equals a inverse times b. So if I first I multiplied each side by a inverse and this is what I get. We know that a inverse a inverse times a equals i. So it's we can write this equation as i times equals i. So that would be um It would be i times a equals a inverse b. No, sorry, this should be an x, right? Yeah, i times x because this is an x. And then if you were to solve for x, you just divide everything by. By um I wait hold on this doesn't make sense. this is I times X and we know that a inverse a inverse is So a inverse times a is i equals x times by x by a inverse of b. We know that a inverse is, when, well basically when, when you do all the calculations, you're going to get x equals a inverse of b. We got this from that. That's how we got this formula. And that wraps it up for this section. So if you like my video, please like and subscribe. Thanks.